Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Transformation Decoded. Um, our original intent was for the three of us to all be together and actually doing a uh, professionally um, done podcast, but with our current situation and circumstances, we decided, you know what, we're going to still do this thing and we're still going to launch Transformation Decoded. It just has to be a little bit different for right now, but we look forward uh, to uh, coming to you with our professionally made podcast sometime here in the near future. I'm Lee Woodward, one of the three founders of Transformation Decoded, and I'm going to hand it off to do some quick introductions, and then we're going to hop right into our discussion for the day. So Isabel, I'll, uh, I'll let you take it away. Hello, Isabel Banerjee here, the Encore Catalyst, coming to you live from the great outdoors in Arizona. Great. And how about you, Jackie? Hi, I'm Jackie Elmer, the third founder of Transformation Decoded, and I'm coming from to you live from Scottsdale, Arizona, <laughs> in my dining room. <laughs> Great. And I'm Lee Woodward, the third founder of Transformation Decoded, and I'm right in the heart of Phoenix, Arizona, uh, coming from what is kind of my stock room made up office space. So um, really excited to get today going. Um, first, I'll just recap a little bit about what started the three of us in Transformation Decoded. And Jackie, Isabel, and I all were in a mastermind group together. And as part of that experience, we realized we got amazing things mastermind experience, but by far the best was our friendship. And we just kind of continued on this mastermind theme. And we meet once a week, if not more, um, to kind of kickstart our weeks and just to kind of stay aligned uh, both from a business standpoint and from a personal standpoint. And one of the common things, even though our businesses are a little bit different, we view things a little bit differently, we realized that we had this common theme of really wanting to have transformation be part of our lives, continuing to move forward. And so we just started talking about this idea of how do you how do we explain that to people? How do we talk about it? How do we help each other transform our lives? And we thought, there you go, transformation decoded. So um, that's really what we try to do together is transform our lives, transform the lives of our clients, um, and really the communities, our families. And so we are real zealots about transformation. And um, we actually were having one of those mastermind topics uh, discussions yesterday, and we had a completely different plan for today. Um, we were going to be discussing the chapter that Jackie wrote um, in Isabel's amazing book, and um, which we covered a chapter I wrote in our previous podcast. There you go. Who am I now? A wonderful story of feminine <laughs> wisdom. And we just had to get real with each other. I think that's the, the uh, only way yeah. I can kind of put it. And we started to talk about feelings and emotions. And we thought, you know what? We're not alone in this right now. If we're feeling this, other people are feeling it. So we said, let's put the book chapter on hold which is an amazing uh, discussion about comparanoia, which is very intense feelings and emotions wrapped up in that. But we wanted to talk about feelings and emotions. And ladies, before um, I kind of kick it off to you, because I, I want to throw some questions out to you, I found this really cool quote, and I want to share it to kind of start our discussion. It says, emotions are celebrated and repressed, analyzed and medicated, adored and ignored but rarely, if ever, are they honored. And that is by um, Carla McLaren, who's a specialist on emotions and empathy and whatnot. And I just thought that really kind of summed up our conversation yesterday and our decision to honor our emotions by having this discussion. So, you know, Isabel, I'll, I'll throw it over to you. When I read that, kind of what does that bring up to you? 
um, it it re, um, rejuvenates the conversation we had about uh, Brene Brown's new podcast, Unlocking Us. And, you know, we're all faithful devotees of Brene Brown and how she's helped us to look at ourselves and our feelings in a healthy, natural way instead of, you know, what we've been sort of trained as in society over decades. And she interviewed recently Dr. Mark Brackett on the topic of feelings. And it really put it in new pers perspective for me that really just being able to name each feeling as it came up and then identify really why um, that was happening and to be okay with facing it and to be okay with knowing that that's a healthy natural stage to go through. And our conversation yesterday about understanding there's, we're all having so many feelings these days and they are coming in waves is the feeling, my, my expression. I feel like I have these different waves of feelings rolling over me constantly. And in the beginning, I, um, I was surprised by it, and then I was a little embarrassed by that, thinking, hey, come on, I got it all together, you know, I can do all of this stuff. But um, it's, you know, my mom used to say, misery loves company. That's not as nice a quote as to say, I'm really glad I have you to, to talk to about my feelings and to really honor them. Thank you, Lee, for asking. Yeah, uh, Jackie, it's interesting because Isabel mentioned Benet Brown and, and naming emotions, and you sent us something really interesting about how vast range of emotions are, but how we don't always think about them. So tell me a little bit more about kind of your thoughts on what, um, you know, what emotions are, and are you, do you feel like you have a wide range or kind of a limited view of emotions? Great question. And just to put a little context to this, we're actually recording this on April 28th, 2020. So we are well into the pandemic. And so whenever you're watching this, just to give you some context as to what's going on, um, I feel like we've entered the tunnel and I can't see behind me anymore. And I'm not really sure I can see ahead of me. Like, you know, we know that the world has changed and we know that we keep talking about we're going to get through this together, but what is this? We're going to get through this to what together? So that's just some context. And it's so interesting because when the whole thing started for me, I'm like, hey, I am good. I've got a plan. Like I'm going to use this to, to stay motivated and do my marketing and blah, blah, blah. Like I had a whole plan. Everything was great. Um, I was in Nashville with my daughter for a bit because she had an elect the last day of elective surgeries. Um, but then we got stuck there for two weeks. And I just stayed in busy mode, busy, busy, busy. And then as I got home, I slowly, you know, kept picking up cogs in my wheel, so to speak, you know, things kept kind of jamming me up. And I'm one of those type people, which is why this conversation is perfect. Talk about transformation. We're in the middle of transformation and we don't even know what all that's going to look like. But I'm one of those people who's never really felt my feelings. Um, and so when I was listening to Brené Brown talk about essentially most people can name three feelings, which are sadness, um, love, and happiness, or sadness, anxiety. It's either, you know, two negatives and one positive, or two positives and one negative. And honestly, most of the time, it's two negatives and a positive. And she wrote, you know, she has this list of actually 30 emotions. And so that really spoke to me when I stopped and thought about my own process and journey of dealing with these emotions. Now, I'm the mom of millennials, and uh, as are both of you and many of you listening, and we know that a buzzword with that group right now is anxiety. And I know for me, I just didn't get that for the longest time. I, I, can, I look back on my life and I can remember times where I was scared or worried or a few other things, but I never ever used the word anxious. Um, so I've spent a lot of time just trying to understand that just from that perspective. But that's a lot of what I've been feeling. That's the, that's the word that I can put to it. But going through and looking at this list of 30, then it was easier for me to put it into context. And what you started with, Lee, I think is so important. We've got to be able to recognize it, name it, and acknowledge it in order to process it and move beyond it and be okay with it. 
Yeah, and I think you know, something you said, Jackie, is really interesting, um, that acknowledging and how I think, and in particular for women sometimes, I think there's some um, emotions that are okay to express. And then there's a set of emotions that even if we could have named more on that list of 30, because they weren't hard words, right? They're kind of grief, you know, shame, guilt, but it's almost like we're supposed to repress some of those. So I, I don't know, Isabel, kind of what are your thoughts on kind of the stories you've been told on what's okay to express and then what emotions do you keep to yourself? Uh, absolutely. I'm thinking exactly that, especially in positions of leadership or when we deem ourselves to be a role model, it's like you can't show fear or you can't show um, anxiety or you can't show confusion, whatever. That would, you know, that would be doing a disservice to the that we have it's like with your children you know you're not ever supposed to be afraid of the monster under the bed you're supposed to be the cool heroine that will save the day for them right and so this is this is a lot of growth for me <laughs> you know as we continue to transform to go first of all yeah i do feel it and yeah it's okay and yeah it's really good to process it and come through the other side knowing that that doesn't make me love anything it actually makes me more of everything yeah um it also used a word in there isabel a kind of good or you know and so there's also this idea that emotions are good or bad and yeah. I, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on that. Are they? Are they really neutral and we make them good? And, I mean, or how would it change us if we just thought of not good or bad, they just are what they are? I think that's it more than anything. I mean, certainly bad things happen. There's no doubt about that. Terrible things happen. What we're experiencing right now with the pandemic and all of that, I mean, I mean, nobody can look at that in general and say that it's good. Although down the road at some point, and maybe even currently, we're going to be able to look back on good things that came from it. Family closeness, um, you know, just reprioritizing our lives. I mean, a lot of different things like that. So it's like anything, um, it, it is neutral until we put emotion, until we put meaning behind whatever it is. And, and so I think that's an important part of it is to acknowledge the negative side of the feeling, those feelings that are bad, there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. It's okay to feel bad. And I think that we, as a society, have grown up um, feeling like we have to get rid of that emotion. We have to get rid of those thoughts just as soon as possible. You know, it, it's not okay. Oh, honey, you know, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad is what we're told. Oh, don't cry. I mean, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas if we were, and certainly no adult or, or role model or whatever meant to suppress that but we realize now looking back that that's a lot of what's happened instead of saying you know what i understand that 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 feels painful it feels painful and that's okay let's talk about it and process it and i know just the work that i've done not just with Brené brown but others if you really will stop acknowledge it breathe into it it takes about 90 seconds for any emotion to pass through you and that deep breathing is a big part of it and then you, you come back down to, to a neutral state that does make it easier to, to not shove it away, but look at it and go, okay, guess what? I can handle this. I can handle this and I can move forward from it. Yeah, you bring up something really interesting. And we touched on this yesterday too, about kind of the idea of compassion. We were specifically talking about self-compassion, but you know, Jackie, what you were just saying was, it made me realize like how can we show compassion or empathy for others if we're going through an experience or feeling certain things if we can't even recognize it in ourselves it almost yeah. puts up this wall right i mean if we aren't brave enough to open ourselves up to really be honest with what we're feeling so i uh I agree with you, Jackie, you brought up an imagery for me of, you know, and 
because of how I was brought up, stuffing those emotions down all the time, just stuff them down, pretend they don't exist. And suddenly I got an image of when you have stuffed all that stuff in the closet and you try to get one more piece of junk in there and you open the closet door and out it comes, out the, comes the avalanche. And so it, it definitely would make more sense to Marie Kondo those emotions before we <laughs> shove them all in the closet, right? Yeah, it's like you've heard me say it. My, I shove all mine under the rug and it's kind of like, what hump? What hump? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think it's really interesting because um, I think we all agreed yesterday that we've had each of us at some point, maybe in different times, but through this, we were trying to, in essence, fake it a little bit, right? I mean, as we didn't use that exact word, but we were, it's like, okay, I'm just going to make a new, I was using new normal. I'm going to make a new normal. And, right. you know, Jackie, you had kind of your words around this as well. And I think yesterday it was such a relief for me, at least. And we just kind of went, screw it. Like, I can't make new normal out of this. Like, I'm just going to kind of give, we gave each other permission to go, I'm just going to feel about this, how I'm feeling about it. I don't know if we were you guys, but for me, it was like this, ah, oh, I can breathe. <laughs> well, the word that came up for me was deny. I was denying it. And part of it was kind of like along the lines of survivor guilt, thinking, you know what? I don't have a whole lot going on in terms of you know, my income and a, a total disruption to my life. I'm an empty nester now. I don't have kids at home that I'm trying to homeschool while I grow a business or work a, a job or whatever it is. I, I'm, not I'm not forced to be out among the masses, the limited masses, but whatever, all of that. And so for me, I kept, I kept thinking, I have to deny this because I have no right to feel this way because I don't have it bad, if you will. <laughs> Right. Oh, boy, did that one hit home to me, Jackie. That's right. I'm in San too. Really, this is not a big change in my life. I've you know, been working from home for a long time. My husband and I have a pretty quiet social routine. Hey, you know, this is really no biggie. We're still eating good meals, and, and we go for our walks together. But I've been denying as much as possible that I was feeling all of those things. I worry for my own plans and safety and financial security in the future and worry for my family's health and safety and my friends and, you know, okay, so what will be the business success um, that we all work towards in the future? So, yeah, queen of denial, that's me. <laughs> Yeah, and I think mine on Sunday was I had, so your your conversation, Jack, because Jackie kind of kicked this off with us, and it was yeah. perfect timing because on Sunday, I had finally said we were actually had to um, check on some, some something at my parents' house, and I just said, you know what, I'm pissed about this, I'm mm. mad about it, I'm upset. I'm mad that my kids are worried about it. My son's graduating from college, his job plan. And I just, this is the first time when I was like, screw it. I'm not okay with this. I'm pissed. And then it was like, okay, now I can talk. <laughs> it's that almost that 90 seconds. It's acknowledging it and letting it process through you to where you can go. Okay, I can still be pressed, but I can handle it. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to put each of you on the spot now. So as we start to kind of wrap down here, what is one recommendation? And Isabel, we'll start with you. One recommendation, something that's worked for you um, as kind of helping you deal with the stress, the different emotions, what's something, words of wisdom you would pass on to our listeners? You mean besides uh, Netflix binge watching and drinking wine? <laughs> yeah, except numbing and dumbing. No numbing okay, and dumbing. No, no. <laughs> okay, because you know, those are in my toolbox. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Um, yeah, you did put me on the spot. 
so for me, what the very first thing that came to my mind is to have a community like I have. So pick your tribe, pick the, the people that you can really count on in your life to love you when you're mad, bad, sad, fearful, whatever, in all of those emotions. And that won't, um, you know, they'll blow your nose and they'll pour you another glass of wine. It won't lie to you and say stupid shit. Like, get over it. It's all right. Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. Um, you're better off than most people are, if I hear that one more time, right? So there it is. Pick your tribe. Great. Love it. Jackie, how about you? My best friend, my journal. This is oh, where yeah. I, I've journaled since I was in, I think, seventh grade. Um, and I've gone year, you know, a couple of years where I skipped or would just do a little bit here and there. But about two years ago, about the time that we all came together, I got super recommitted to journaling. I had just started right before our tribe came together. Um, but really, my journal, even, even if it's just one sentence, I try to get up every morning and process how I'm feeling right at that moment, whatever it is. And I've learned that it doesn't have to be a positive word. That's okay. I don't have to try to shift it to, oh, it's the morning. I should wake up and choose to be happy today or whatever. It's so whatever's on my mind. And then as I go through the day, I'll go in and make another entry. Or sometimes I'll journal for six pages, whatever's on my mind. But getting it out of me helps so much. And then the second one for me is movement. I am really, that's how I relieve stress. So, you know, I've been doing six mile walks um, and I'm talking half the time through those, you know, even if I'm not, if I'm talking it out, like I'm journaling, you know, some of my stuff, but again, it's just like, it gets that energy. It gets that negative energy out of me. And then I do a lot of yoga too, because same thing, it's movement and it just gets the breathing going and that, and that really helps me. Yeah, absolutely on the movement one for me. So I do a lot of um, outdoor walking. And for me, the other thing um, that I really, especially now in this particular, I just nature for me is an incredibly grounding, calming. Um, it's, you know, whatever stone you're looking at or whatever tree, it probably dwarfs our history. And so for me, spending time with nature and really, whether it's tuning into the birds, uh, you know, looking at the blooms right now, because it's so beautiful, uh, nature to me is a very grounding and I can almost feel the roots of my soul growing into the earth when I really just sit there and say, I'm just going to take in nature. And that to me just kind of puts me right where I need to be. So um, beautiful yes beautiful. well it's like all of our other topics so far we could probably continue this discussion for a few more hours uh, because it's just such a rich content but we're going to wrap it up from there and from the three of us at transformation decoded um, wishing you all the health and wellness and um, again these are stressful times don't have to deny anything um, like all of us, we're just take it one, one day at a time. And Jackie and Isabel, leave it up to you to say any final words before we tune out. I would just like to encourage all of our audience to use the F word feeling often. F words rock, you know, you know me and my five favorite F words. So absolutely. And the, the interesting thing about all of this with our discussion and other discussions I've had is the tools to really work yourself through all of this are pretty simple. None of it requires, you know, a great bit of, of extra whatever. Anybody right. can find a piece of paper to write. We can get out in nature. We can pull together our tribe. So use those resources and don't be afraid to be vulnerable and share what you're feeling. Great. I love it, ladies. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now. Bye.